Gay-Lussac law is our third basic law. Here our volume is constant. So our container is rigid. We can't change it. So as I increase my temperature, my particles are going to move around faster because that increases my kinetic energy. And therefore my pressure is going to also increase because I'm having more collisions. More collisions makes more pressure. So therefore this is also a direct relationship. The formula for Gay-Lussac's law is P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. So here I have a rigid container. I have my gas particles in it. And this time I'm going from a small temperature to a high temperature. They're going to move around more at this higher temperature. They're going to have more collisions and those more collisions is going to be a higher pressure. Let's do some examples. For our examples, we always want to list our variables first. So we have a pressure of 1.104.1 1 1 kilopascals and a volume, 478 milliliters, has a pressure reduced to 88.2 kilopascals. So I have my initial conditions and my final condition. I have pressure and volume and temperature are my three options. I start with a pressure of 104.1 kilopascals and a volume of 478 milliliters. It says its pressure reduced to 88.2 kilopascals and I want to know its new volume. Because it's Boyle's Law, my temperature remains constant. So my formula with pressure and volume is P1V1 equals P2V2. I'm looking for V2, so I divide both sides by P2. So I get V2 equals P1V1 over P2. I plug in 104.1 kilopascals times my volume, 478 milliliters divided by my second pressure, 88.2 kilopascals. And that equals 564 milliliters. So as I decrease my pressure, my volume increased. That makes sense. Charles' law, we have sample gas with a volume of 8.98 milliliters at a temperature of 38 degrees Celsius. My temperature is lowered to 39.9. What's the new volume? So again, I have pressure, volume, and temperature, initial conditions, and final conditions. I have initial volume of 8.98 milliliters, initial temperature of 38.8 degrees Celsius, temperature is lowered to negative 39.9 degrees Celsius, I want to know my new volume. My pressure did not change. I remember we learned about Kelvin in the last video. All of our gas calculations have to have temperature in Kelvin. So to convert, I have to add 273 to both. So I get Kelvin temperatures of 311.8 Kelvin and 233.1 Kelvin. That's what I'll use in my equation. My equation is V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. I'm looking for V2. I have two fractions, so I'm first going to cross multiply. V1 T2 equals V2 T1, and then divide by what I don't want. I don't want T1, so I'm going to divide both sides by T1. So I get V2 is equal to V1 T2 over T1. Now I plug in my numbers, 8.98 milliliters. My T2 is 233.1 Kelvin divided by 311.8 Kelvin. I get 6.71 6 
milliliters. Notice my Kelvin cancels out with my Kelvin, and I'm left with milliliters. My third example is Gay-Lussac's law. I have gas at 330 Kelvin and four atmospheres. It is cooled to 300 Kelvin. So I have pressure, volume, temperature, one and two. My first pressure is four atmospheres at 330.0 Kelvin. It's cooled to 300.0 Kelvin. I want to know my new pressure. Volume didn't change. P1 over T1, P2 over T2. I cross multiply, then divide. So I get P1 T2 equals P2 T1. I'm looking for P2, so I divide both sides by T1. So P2 is equal to P1 T1, sorry, T2 over T1. So I plug in P1 is 4.0 atm atmosphere times my initial temperature of 330.0 Kelvin divided by my initial oops, this should be 300 Kelvin and that's why my initial temperature is my 330 Kelvin when I plug those in I get 3.6 atmospheres so as I decrease my temperature, my pressure also decreased. So that also follows what we know. When we combine all three laws together, we will find that we have our Boyle's law, and when we add in our Gay-Lussac's law and our Charles law, in both cases we divided by your temperature. So if I have temperature constant, I get Boyle's Law. If I have volume constant, I get Gay-Lussac's Law. And if I have pressure constant, I get Charles' Law. Okay. And this is the one you'll also find in your reference packet. Standard temperature and pressure are also used in our gas laws. Okay. Standard temperature is 273 Kelvin. So zero degrees Celsius, and standard pressure is 1.0 atmospheres. So you might see that listed in a problem where it says a gas starts at STP, standard temperature and pressure, and that's all that it means, the standard conditions. So in practice, we have a 50 milliliter sample at STP. So that means my temperature and my pressure is my 273 Kelvin, one atmosphere. It's brought, so now we've changed, to 30 or 300 Kelvin, 5 atmosphere. I want my new volume. So again, set up the same way. Pressure, volume, and temperature. Initial and final conditions, so ones and twos. My first pressure is STP, so that's one atmosphere. My initial volume is my 50 milliliters. And my initial temperature, standard temperature, 273 Kelvin. I change to 300 Kelvin and 5 atmospheres. I'm looking for my new volume. So I set it up. P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. I have two fractions, so I'm first going to cross multiply. P1 V1 T2 equals P2 V2 T1. I'm looking for my new volume, that's my V2, so that's what I'm looking for. I'm going to divide away the stuff I don't want on this side, my P2s and my T1. So they cancel out, so I'm left with V2 is equal to P1 V1 T2, my top, divided by the bottom P2 T1. And I just plug in from my chart. P1 was 1 atmosphere. My V1, 50 milliliters. My T2, 300 Kelvin. Divided by my P2, 5.0 atmosphere. 
my T1 273 Kelvin. And when I do this, I get 10.9 something, but I need to round to my lowest number significant figure, my one atmosphere, my five atmospheres, so I round to two, so I get 11 milliliters.